Let's say you want to create a nice graphic or image or thumbnail picture. Now, one of the most common apps to use for this is Adobe Photoshop. And Photoshop is great, but it's expensive. Now, if you want Photoshop features for free, you can use Photopea. Now, it's not only free, but you don't have to install anything. I couldn't believe it at first, but it's really a complete recreation of Photoshop. It runs in your web browser, so you don't need to install anything and you can access it from anywhere. And you're always running the latest version of the software, so you don't have to worry about those software updates. Now, I get a lot of questions about thumbnail design and we do use Adobe Photoshop, but it's not something that everyone has. So we found this great free alternative for you. And to get you started, I'm going to show you how it works. I'm going to take you step by step so that by the end of this video, you're going to be able to create something like this, or you could do a basic skin retouch like this. Sounds good, right? Let's get started. Just open a browser and type in photopea.com. And this is what it looks like. Very similar to Photoshop. It doesn't have all of its features, but definitely enough to get the job done. Now there are some ads on the side, but they aren't intrusive at all. And if you prefer to work without ads, you can upgrade to a premium account, which is currently $40 per year. Photopy was created by Ivan Kutsker, a young programmer based in the Czech Republic. It's an open source image editor that works with most file formats like PSD, Sketch, RAW, and more simple ones like JPG and PNG. Now, I was really impressed with it when I did my tests, and occasionally I did experience some lags when I worked on larger files. For example, a skin retouch on a more complex image isn't as smooth as in Photoshop, but overall the performance was fine, especially for a free tool, it works great. So let's take a closer look. First, let's create a new project. So you can do this by clicking here on the new project or go to file and select new. Here in this window, you have three sections. First, let's name our project. You can do it right here. I'll call mine Excel Plus. With this drop down on the right, you can change the units. If you're creating something for print, it's best to use millimeters or inches. In my case, I'm creating an image for the web, so I'm going to go with pixels. For the dimension size, you can specify width and height directly. I'll set mine to 720p, or you can also select a size from several of these predefined templates down here, like a Facebook cover page, Instagram post, or Twitter profile. There are even some sizes for specific mobile devices. Now you can also pick a free graphic template and work on that. Here you can specify the resolution of the image. Let's fix it to 150 DPI. And with this drop down, you can select the background color. I'm going to set mine to white and then click on create to start the project. Okay, so, so far so good. Let's cover the interface now. If you know Photoshop, this is going to be very familiar for you. On the left side, you have the toolbar. Here you have everything that you need to work on an image, like you have the move tool, select, lasso, magic wand, and so on. You can either select them with a the mouse or use the hotkeys. You'll see these when you hover over the tool. For instance, here we have L for the lasso select. Depending on the selected tool here on top, we have an options menu. When you right click on a tool, you get these additional options. So for example, if I click here, I can change the rectangle select and ellipse select. This in the middle is our working area. This is where the beauty happens. On the right, we have the layers panel, history and swatches. On the top of each panel, you get these two arrows. You can click it to expand or minimize your panel. So let's say we want to change the background color. There are two ways that you can do this. One way is to select the paint bucket tool. If you don't see it, just right mouse click on the gradient icon and select paint bucket tool. By clicking here on the foreground color, you get to pick the color that you want. I'm going to choose this one. Hit OK and click somewhere inside the work area here. The other way you can get this done is to go to the Edit tab up here and select Fill. In this drop down, you can specify which color you want to use. Foreground means that it's going to pick up the color selected on the primary box right here, and background means it's going to pick the color underneath. You can switch between these two colors by just pressing X. 
You can also get to the custom, which lets you choose the color that you want, or black, gray, or white. I'm gonna select background and click OK. With the gradient tool, you can take your background to the next level. So first let's create a new layer by clicking this icon down here. Now we have to specify the colors of our gradient. Select a primary color box and pick the color that you want. Then do the same for the second box. I usually do my gradients in the way that the first color is brighter than the second one. Now go to the gradient tool and up here we get some options. We see the colors that we just selected, but when you click on this arrow, you get to change the gradient colors. Right here, you can specify the type of the gradient. To make the gradient, click and drag inside the work area like this. Linear looks like this. I'm gonna change it to radial and see what we get. That looks nice. Now that we don't need the previous background, we can delete it by dragging it and dropping it into the trash right here. Now let's type something out. To do that, select a type tool or just press T on your keyboard. Before I start typing, let's change some things inside the options menu. So I'm gonna change the font to this one. Let's keep it bold. You can change the color of the font right here. I'm gonna set it to white and hit okay. Now we're ready. Click inside the work area and just start typing. I'll type in Excel plus. Once done, hit confirm. To place the text where you want, first hit V on your keyboard. This is gonna activate the Move tool. So now with the text layer selected, you can move it by just clicking and dragging it to the area that you want. Now, as you probably noticed, when I move the text around, it shows me these red lines that help me align the text horizontally and vertically. Now let's take a look at the blending options. With the text layer selected, Right mouse click on it and choose blending options. Here we can play around with the layer style. We're not gonna cover all of these options now, but let's do a color overlay. I'll set it to this color. Down here, you can select drop shadow to add the shadow to your layer. You can play around with the different options on the right. Let's fix the blending mode to normal. Set the opacity to 50%, change the angle if you want, and adjust the settings down here. So in the end, it may look like this. If you wanna deactivate the layer style, you have to click this check mark right here. I'm gonna keep it active. Stroke lets you put an outline to your layer. Let's change the color to white and increase the size to nine in my case. Another useful blending option I wanna show you is bevel and emboss. This makes your text more 3D type of looking. Adjust the settings as you want, and when you're done, hit OK. You can activate and deactivate the layer style by clicking this arrow on the right and uncheck the eye icon on the thing that you don't want to appear. Let's say you wanna add an image to the canvas. To import a picture, go to File and click Open. This is gonna open it in a separate window as a new project. Now, if you wanna open the image in the existing project, select Open and Place. So let's go with Open and Place and browse for the image. Double click to load it to Photopea. If it's a large file, this might take a little bit of time. I want the picture to cover the entire canvas. So to adjust the size, use these small rectangles. If you don't see them, use the shortcut alt Control t you can change the size by dragging these rectangles, and if you wanna keep the aspect ratio, hold shift while you drag. When you're done, confirm with the check mark up here. Now, this is a good moment to talk about layers. As you can see, the text that we entered before is gone. This is because it's hidden underneath our landscape picture. To make it appear again, we have to bring it back to the top. So let's do that. Let's just drag the text layer to the front and now it's visible. So whatever is on top is gonna to cover whatever's underneath. So if we bring our gradient layer on top of the landscape picture, the image is gonna disappear. I'm just gonna hit Control Z to go back. If you wanna change the name of your layer, double click on the current name and just change it. To make the text stand out more, we can use Gaussian Blur. Select the layer you wanna blur Go to the Filter tab, Blur, and select Gaussian Blur. 
You can specify how much you want it to be blurred, like that, and when you're done, hit OK. Then you can activate and deactivate the filter just like we did with the layer style. Now let's add a rectangle as a background for our text. First select the Rectangle tool from the toolbar. Next, let's specify the color of the rectangle by clicking on the Fill option right here. You can choose between predefined colors down here. Or you can also click this small rectangle to pick the color that you want. This is going to open the Color Picker window. And here you can define the color that you want, just like that. If you want to pick a specific color for your project, you can select it by clicking on that color. When you're done, hit OK. Next, click inside your work area to draw a rectangle. If you see this thin blue border around your shape, that's because it's currently a vector type graphic. The advantage of vector graphics is that you can just resize them without losing quality. A raster graphic, on the other hand, is a pixel based graphic. So if you expand it from small to big, it's going to get blurry and pixelated. Since this is a graphic for the web, we are going to need a raster type. To rasterize your image, right mouse click on the layer and select Rasterize. Let's add some drop shadow to it to achieve a more 3D type of look. Like that should be fine. With the shape layer selected, we can change how it blends with the layer under. Let's go to the blending options up here and pick whatever works best for you. Now is a good time to cover some essential selection tools. First, let's create a new layer by clicking on New Layer. Now choose Rectangle Select from the toolbar up here or press M on your keyboard. Next, choose the area that you want to select. Let's fill the selected area with color. You can do this the same way we did with our background. So edit, fill, change the color, and OK. Or feel free to use the brush tool. Select it from the toolbar. Up here, you can change the size, the hardness, and style for the brush. Next, you can change the blending mode, opacity, and we have more options here. I'm just going to leave it as is. You can change the brush's color by going to the primary color box and selecting the color that you want. Now use the brush inside the selected area. To deselect the area, press Ctrl D. Now let's take a look at the lasso tool. Press L on your keyboard to activate it. With this tool, you can be more flexible with your selection. To delete the selected area, press Ctrl X or use the eraser tool. Just press E to activate it or select it from the toolbar right here. Increase the size and then erase whatever you need from the selected layer. You can also crop an image. First, select a crop tool from the toolbar right here. Now set the crop area as you like by dragging these small rectangles. And then when you're done, hit Enter. As you probably noticed, every step that you're adding to the project is recorded in the History tab up here. So if you want to go back to the specific moment of your project, you can find it and then select it. Then to go back to where you were, scroll down and then select the last step. The important thing to remember is that you only have 30 steps to go back to. You can have 60 though when you go with the premium version of Photopea. Now it's time to save the project. Go to File and then depending on your needs, you can select Save as PSD, which is going to save it in the Photoshop file with all the layers that you have in the project. But keep in mind that you can then only open this in Photoshop or Photop. If you want to publish this to the internet, you should save it as JPG or PNG. In Export, you can select these. I'll choose JPG. In the pop-up window, you can specify the width and the height and the quality of your output image. If you don't see your project properly, you can use the mouse scroll to zoom in or out. Now, I recommend setting the quality to at least 70% or if the size of the file doesn't matter, just go with 100%. When you're done, hit save and it's going to save your image to your downloads folder on your PC. Another very common task when it comes to photo editing is removing the background of an image. Now, the method that I'm going to show you works best with a plain and clean background. First, let's open the picture we want to work on. Go to File, Open, find your image, and then double click to open. Then use the magic wand tool. Select it from the toolbar right here 
And all you need to do is click on the white area that we want to get rid of, just like that. Then press Ctrl X to delete it. And then Ctrl D to deselect. And here you have it. You can now move it with the Move tool. Let's try another example. I'm going to open this image with a hand holding a smartphone. Again, let's use the magic wand to select the area that you want to delete and then Control X and Control D. But here is a piece that the magic wand missed. Let's zoom into the area by holding Alt and use the scroll wheel on your mouse. Select the area again with magic wand and delete. Here's the result. Now we can combine these two pictures. So let's create a new project. Just use the shortcut Control Alt N. I'll select YouTube cover from the presets down here and let's quickly add a name. So I'll call it YT cover. Hit create. Next, let's use the gradient tool for the background. Choose the colors that you want and set the gradient type as you need. I'll pick the radial one. Create the gradient by clicking and then dragging. Now let's go back to grab our portrait picture. Hit V on your keyboard to use the move tool. Now drag and drop that picture in the YouTube project like that. To spice things up, we could add some shadow to it. To do that, click on the effects button down here and select drop shadow. Adjust the settings as you like and then click on OK. Now let's bring in the next image. This time, let's use the shortcut Control X and then let's go to the Project tab and press Control V. Now I can adjust it as I need. If I want to add Drop Shadow 2, I can add it the same way as before or to copy the same settings, right mouse click on the layer with the Drop Shadow, go to the Layer Style and select Copy. Then right mouse click on the layer you want to paste the settings in, Layer Style and choose Paste. If for some reason you don't like how the drop shadow effect appears, you can change the settings by clicking on this arrow right here and then double click on drop shadow. Adjust them and then hit OK. And here's your final result. One last thing I want to show you is how you can easily do a basic retouch of the skin in an image. I have this portrait of a woman and let's say I want to remove the spots on her face. The tool to use is called Spot Healing Brush Tool. Select it from the toolbar. Now let's zoom in more to see the spots better. Hold the spacebar to activate the hand tool and click and drag on the image to adjust the view. Start by increasing the tool size and then selecting the area that you want to remove. Let's just quickly take care of the rest. And this is the final result. There's much more you can do with this. If you want me to do more videos about skin retouching or photo editing in general, please let me know in the comments below. So I hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and do subscribe if you haven't already done so. Many thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video.